This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Hope the travel headed back home is going well. How was media days? Uh, it, it was good, yeah. We're just now leaving Music City and getting, getting rained on here. Hope you guys are having better weather there in Little Rock. It's nice and warm, so they're going to start to cool off once you get back into town. Uh, by the way, Bob Holtz on our McClarty Daniel hotline. You can visit McClartyDaniel.com for all of their inventory. Uh, anything stand out today? Uh, I was able to listen to Lane Kiffin. I missed the other couple of coaches that got up there. Anything stand out from uh, what you heard before you got out of town? Well, well it was, it was uh, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Tennessee a day to finish it up. Yeah, Lane Kiffin, he- he came in and he honestly looked like he hadn't combed his hair. I'm certainly no no fashion plate. I think as everybody who knows me knows, but his hair was kind of kind of going everywhere. And I'm not positive. But I don't think he was wearing socks. He definitely was not wearing a tie. But it looked like he had loafers on. Um, but it was funny. He, he started off talking about you know most guys come in and talk about their team and go over their depth chart a little bit or talk about the players they have there with them today. And and Kiffin uh, started off with a filibuster pretty much about NIL. You know, he's not a fan of NIL. And um, he got a few questions about that, but he barely talked about his team at all when he was in, in there with the room with us. And then uh, Shane Beamer, he's a very enthusiastic guy. Um, you know, he's, they're very optimistic at South Carolina. Got a lot of players back from a team that won eight games and beat Clemson and Tennessee late in the year. And then, Finished up with, with Josh uh, Heupel, Tennessee coach. He, he was pretty good. He didn't talk too long early and gave solid answers. You know, Tennessee, they're real happy to have the the NCAA investigation, you know, have that resolved. And they obviously don't have a postseason ban. And um, they're, they're feeling good. They open up. Tennessee opens up right here in Nashville against Virginia uh, at uh, the, the, uh, the Titans Stadium, Nissan Stadium. So it, it, it was a good, it was a good solid day, but no, no, no real fireworks or anything. Did anybody change your mind, your mind, Bob? How, how you thought and what you thought, kind of about these teams going in? Did anybody change in the order that you picked your teams? Uh, not really. Um, you know, I, you, you kind of feel like like George is going to be really good again, even though they lost a ton of guys in the, the NFL. But Kirby Smart and that staff, they just recruited such a high level. And that, that 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 was a big you know theme that Georgia can make three feet. I guess nobody's well, I didn't know so I haven't looked it up, but uh, nobody's won three in a row in college national championships since Minnesota in the 1930s. And and Kirby said he didn't use that example with his team. <laughs> players might have trouble relating to the 1930 uh, Tennessee, but I guess he talked about the, the Michael Jordan Bulls. I'm not sure the players they can relate to the Bulls very well back back in the 90s, but um, you know you feel good. I think most people are going to pick Georgia to win. I think that I'd be shocked if if uh, Georgia isn't a prohibitive favorite. Tennessee may get some first place votes. There's always not always, but a lot of times somebody will for Vandy or Missouri or something. I guess they're just doing that for fun, or maybe they're drunk. I don't know. And then I'm sure Alabama and LSU will probably divide the West votes pretty evenly, and we'll, we'll see how that turns out. But I, so yeah, it's kind of same old, same old. I, I guess the usual suspects. Uh, would be picked to win to win the SEC. You, know, I, I, you don't have that coach who just is incredibly entertaining. That's part. That's partially what SEC media days are about. This is a week long television show for the for the SEC network. You know, and 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 the coaches are there, yes, to talk at a certain amount of time, talk about their teams, whatever it is they want to. People want entertainment, though, and you got that so often from Steve Spurrier, and there is no Steve Spurrier now. You got that with, like, a, a Lou Holtz at South Carolina, um, even a Mike Leach, of course, at Mississippi State. Are there any coaches that are really entertaining right now? Because there's information, uh, there's questions that they'll shut down, there's complaints they might have, but we only remember the really entertaining moments. And, and right now I think Sam Pittman might have been the most entertaining. I wonder what you think. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I'll put – Make me sound like a homer, but I'd, I'd probably rate rate Sam at the top. You're right. It'd be nice. Maybe they should just bring Steve Spurrier back and let him talk, and you know, just just just, just kind of show the other coaches how it's done. Or maybe they should show a Steve Spurrier video to all these guys and say this this is the way you do it. But yeah, it's funny. We were talking to Sam a little bit uh, 
before he went in the in the, the big room, and I, I think I asked him something like, "Hey, this is your third time to do this because you know his first season they they didn't have media days because of COVID." And uh, Sam said he still gets a you know a little nervous. He doesn't know why because he, he's obviously done a ton of interviews with the Arkansas head coach. But he said, you know, they they they, they rate you or rank you. I think he said they grade you, and he means there's some media outlets that will grade the coaches one through fourteen. Who was the best? Who was the worst? And really, Sam was as entertaining as anybody there. He's usually pretty. He keeps it pretty light. He'll, he'll give you some good answers, and um, he, he had one of the funnier lines. I, you know, I can't remember what game it was last year, but they won a game in Fayetteville, and afterwards, uh, it might have been Cincinnati, maybe it was South Carolina, but Sam said something like, I'm just going to get me a, old, a cold beer. And so that thing kind of took off, so some guy asked him about if he ever drank hams. And I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with hams. I think that's a Midwest uh, beer. And they have a bear, cartoon bear, that is their mascot or something. But it's not exactly uh, a real expensive bear, I think. It would be a way to put it. And Sam said something like he's had he's had a few hams, but they make you burp. And he said something like, hey, buddy, you you, you look like you're doing pretty good. Why don't you step it up? Meaning, <laughs> why don't you get a higher higher brand of beer? That, 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 that was kind of funny. But, uh, I mean, n- nobody was really bad, but. And nobody was incredible, but I'd say out of everybody, Sam was as entertaining as anybody, probably more than most. Bob, do you, do you think he feels any type of pressure to produce this year? I mean, you, you look at those first three non-conference games, I think they're all three dubs, and, and then going into at LSU. Would that be his biggest win as the Arkansas Razorback coach if we were able to beat LSU at Baton Rouge? Yeah, I mean, you assume LSU will probably be ranked in the top ten when that happens. It depends on what goes on in the season, but I'm sure all these guys feel pressure because they're really just one so-so or bad season away from being on the hot seat, unless you're probably Nick Saber or Kirby Smart. And um, you know, I know Arkansas went seven and six last year, won the bowl game, and and at the same point out, they won the bowl game with without a lot of starters, guys that either gone in the portal or were getting ready for the NFL draft. Uh, and and then they had you know Rocket got hurt early in, in that game, and they were having to play some young guys that came through for them. So. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not a fan, obviously, but I don't think seven and six when you're Arkansas had had a record given uh, the, the history and the, uh, their, their history in the SEC. But obviously, expectations were higher, and they easily could have been eight and four, even nine and three. They lost some of those tight games, and uh, so coming off a nine and four season and then going seven and six when you were ranked, I think, in, as high as the top ten, um, but that's disappointing. I'm sure Sam is, is feeling some heat, and you know he knows they. In the SEC, you you, you 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 better win. But speaking of Steve Spur, I, I think it was him that said one time that the problem with the SEC is everybody expects to win, and when two SEC teams play, one of them has to lose, obviously. So I'm sure Sam, along with all these other guys, feels feels pressure. I'm sure Kirby Smart feels pressure to, to compete for another national title, and Nick Saban feels pressure to get back in the playoffs, and uh, Shane Beamer feels pressure to build on what they did. So um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure Sam Sam knows they probably underachieved last year, but based on the expectations, so they obviously want want to have a big bounce back year. Don't you think that these coaches feel pressure no matter what, even to be up to their own standards? Um, you know, you and I think that's one of the things Jimbo Fisher was was talking about about the pressure to produce this year. Even if you're 11 and 0, you know, you put pressure on yourself to go 12 and 0, and that goes along with the money uh, at the same time. Um, I wonder, though, Bob, one of the themes about this week, and it started with Greg Sankey's talk. I know every coach has mentioned it in their opening statements. If they didn't, then they were asked about it multiple times by media members. Um, the bookend of this media day is that SEC wants help from Congress to, quote, unquote, fix the current state of college football. Greg Sankey spent a lot of time on that on Monday. And then three senators, a bipartisan proposal came out from, uh, from the Senate today. We don't have to get into the details, but it just seems like this um, very well could have been coordinated by the SEC office and those three senators. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's, it's kind of scary to think you're dependent on, on the U.S. Congress to, to figure anything out these days. I'm, I'm not pointing out figures of one side or the other, just both sides of the aisle, really, but yeah, I mean, Greg Sankey, they they want a uniform national NIL policy. 
because right now the states are doing it on, on their own. And I, I get why they're doing that. And obviously, if you're the Arkansas legislature, you're going to help the Razorbacks and you know give them the most favorable NIL uh, legislation you can. Same, uh, uh, certainly. In, I don't know what, what, if they care about in Idaho, but obviously these SEC states, <laughs> they're going to you know make it as favorable for their their colleges as they can. And it's almost like everything in the in the SEC is a competition, an arms race. Whether it's facilities or recruiting or salaries for your coordinators or head coaches, and, and really having the best NIL deal is probably just an extension of that. And the Lane Kiffin made it real clear that it's basically just you know organized cheating. It's pay for play, and and somebody asked him to, to rank Ole Miss's boosters what kind of in the SEC hierarchy. Like, like where does Ole Miss rank in in terms of their boosters helping with NIL and and uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but Lane basically said, you know, he wasn't going to answer that. And then he's kind of puzzled, I wish I could, because there are obviously some schools I'm sure he'd, li- he'd like to, to, to point fingers at. But um, really, it's not a level playing field. And you might say, well, it doesn't really matter whether there's an I.O. or not an I.O. We all know uh, certain, te- you know, Alabama and LSU and Georgia are at the top, and, and other teams are in the middle trying to get up there. Or some teams are at the bottom trying to get up to the middle, but... Um, right now, they, they'd kind of like to do it where there's some kind of salary cap where, you know, you just didn't have, um, you know, unknown amounts that the boosters could spend to buy players. Um, and I, let, honestly, we all know that stuff's been going on under the table. Now it's over the table. But I, I think they all, they all want some uniformity to it. So so it's apples to apples, not apples to oranges or, or grapes to watermelons in some cases, depending on what, what kind of NIL deals some schools might have, big or little. Good description on the grapes to watermelon, man. I'd never heard that one before. So what's top of mind for you uh, before camp starts? What is it that you want to be writing about that you that you think is interesting about this team without having a chance to talk to anybody for the next at least the next couple weeks? Well, it was it was interesting. I thought Landon Jackson did, did a really nice job. I mean, obviously, K.J. is the quarterback. He's faced the program, and, and Rocket Sanders is – uh, you know, coming off a great year, really two really good years, but a really exceptional sophomore year. And uh, and Landon was a guy, you know, who transferred in from LSU and was coming off an injury. And But it's really interesting to see how he's transformed his body uh, going from, um, I think he said it was 238 to 283, and, and he still had real good speed. It's interesting. I guess they run all these tests. He said he can run, as Sam mentioned this, and so did Landon, he's, he can run like over 20 miles an hour. Which, if you're in your car, that doesn't sound very fast. But if you're on foot, that's, that's pretty darn fast. I probably would run like negative five miles an hour or something. But um, it was interesting to talk to Landon. Uh, I think he was excited to be there and represent the defense. And he talked a lot about the depth he feels like they have on the D line, really three deep at all, all three positions. And a lot of that is with with, with the portal guys. Um, and some of those guys we saw in the spring, and some came in. Like like Tank Booker from Maryland came in after spring ball, so really all the all you know we have to go on is what we hear about summer workouts. But um, I, I think it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I, I think they probably had what close to thirty guys come through the portal, something like that. And man, it's, sorry, it's really pouring rain. Thankfully, Tom Murphy is driving rather than me. But um, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. But I, I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, what what the portal guys do. Uh, how they look in camp, especially uh, on defense. Bob, we'll leave it there. Safe ride, safe driving, whomever it is that's doing the driving. Um, two that's hands that's on the wheel, right. okay? 12 and 9. Yeah, yeah th- thankfully Tom's doing the driving. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate you, okay, Bob. Okay, you guys Holt. take care. Yeah. Okay, bye. He couldn't do 11-15 because there were, ah. there were coaches talking, but he could do right now in the car, headed home. Hair on fire. He, he Bob's the man, but I think he could get uh, he could get he could get three miles an hour. He, he's selling himself short on the negative five miles an hour. He could be he's positive three at least. I don't think negative they, negative miles per hour is impossible to pull yeah, off. I think he yeah I think he can beat that. I think at negative miles per hour you disappear. You just it's like the Indiana Jones movie. Stay with us as we get into the home stretch of halftime. I'm McClarty Daniel. Hotlines open for you at eight seven seven three seven seven. 6963. Back with more halftime next. 
Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.